Today on Handy Dad TV, we're finally going to do the last episode of The Shed. Coming up. Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. This project is proudly sponsored by Nailgun Depot and Everwin Pneumatic Tools. Gutter Guard is such an easy thing to put on and cheap. And there's really no reason to do a gutter without it. Because um, I know this is the cheapest kind you can get. I got this on my shed 22 years ago and it's still on. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the cheap stuff. Don't spend a lot of money on Gutter Guard. How nice! Now, are you going to be able to get off and not hit your head? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Oh yeah, look at that. No problem. Yeah. Baby's got a new home. service the door for any reason. Uh, I'm wondering if we should make this removable. Like just put it in with screws. And that's exactly what we did. We nailed the left side, that's a fixed panel, but the other one I put in with screws. the door if it gets too close. The front door was the same piece of T111 siding that was cut from the wall in episode 2. That way the seams would line up perfectly with the rest of the wall. The trim around the door was all 1x4 pine, just like the rest of the trim on the shed. I'm attaching the trim with a pneumatic crown stapler. The staples are quarter inch wide and inch and a quarter long, just short enough that they don't poke through when stapling them from the back through the plywood. Never have too many. You can see how the plywood is bowed, and that's why I used a clamp to hold the wood tight while stapling. We're hoping that the trim will help straighten out the bow over time, but it doesn't affect the operation of the door either way. Not bad for a first test fit, but it's a little tight. It's got to go up, and the sides are a little snug. All right, not bad. Looks good. Loading up the lofts from the garage, and I got to tell you, these things are really pretty cool. We don't have electric run yet, but we can see. Speaking of electric, that was the next step on this project. We needed to trench a line to bring the electric wire from the house all the way out to the shed. And that wasn't very easy because of all the tree roots. 
when you're trenching a line, don't bother with cutting all these big roots. Just dig right underneath them. Now, some of you commented on episode one that I was using the wrong kind of wire, even though I intended to run it in conduit. So we bought 12-2 UF wire. The UF stands for underground feed, and it doesn't need to be put in conduit. We were fortunate to already have a GFCI outlet on the back of the house, which you can see here behind Josh. We attached the new gray wire to the old yellow one and snaked it through the same hole in the floor. Because the frame of the window sticks out a little bit from the rest of the siding, I decided that we would attach the window trim to itself and basically make an entire frame, pre-paint them, and the way they're held together is just with pocket holes. And so they can just be nailed right in place. One of the things that concerned me about the roll-up door was down here. The fact that the door is on the inside of the shed, this is the shed floor, and that's not pressure-treated plywood. And even if it was, pressure-treated plywood can still delaminate over time because of the, the moisture and the rain and all the elements. You can even see how the water has been wicking in here. All right, a piece of flashing, some staples, and a little bit of clear caulk. You might be able to see it right there. This, and I only caulked the top edge, by the way, and that's just in case he pulls the mower in while it's wet, no water will get underneath there. I'd rather it sit here and dry on its own. Now remember, this whole piece from like, see where that saw line is? This piece right here slopes down. I did that when we were building the foundation, actually. And, um, that way, if there is any water that hits the door, we know this is slanted, so it will roll out instead of rolling in. Here we go. We added this rubber garage door kind of strip here. It's actually vinyl. And uh, just to cut down on the, the rain, and also to close up the space a little bit and it doesn't interfere with the operation of the door. But if you remember that trim inside here, I don't know if you could see it, but that trim inside there was set back because it had to stick out even with the, the siding. So there was a space there. So this not only covers that space, but it cuts down on the amount of rain that hits the door. So we've been working on this very part-time for about four months now, and uh, I'm ready to give you a tour. So first and foremost, the door. It's a really pretty design. Josh wanted a cross buck, so we put that in. We gave it a, uh, a small ramp just so we could get the things in, like the snow blower and some bikes at some point. All right, so the majority of the space is taken up with the big tools. So we've got the lawn tractor here, the zero turn mower, as well as a snow blower here that is also a monster. But behind that, we've got power washer. We've got the robot for the pool. There's a blower, lawn tools hanging on the wall. We've got some extra lumber here, ladders things like that, games. The feature of this shed is these two lofts though. This is a really cool feature because it just increases the storage and lets you use up above. And they're both of a height where you can get underneath them. Everybody in the family, nobody's gonna hit their head. This one is exactly the same way. And the door openings are the same height as well. Again, no bumping of heads. Now this loft is more of the seasonal kind of stuff. There's some pool stuff up in here. There's some chemicals, chlorine, etc. The spreader's up there. And we also have the bagger for the lawn tractor. 
Just put it up, get it out of the way. One of the other cool features, let me turn the lights off for a second, and I'm gonna close the door. All right, with the door closed, we've just got light coming in from the windows, as well as these skylights. So these are vents, but they're also, because they're translucent, they let light through. And it's really cool. I mean, look, you can see stuff on top of the loft, even if the power was out. And granted, of course, these two windows let in a lot of light too. But in no way is it dark in here. So even if we didn't want to electrify it, we'd have plenty of light. But of course, we did run power to the shed. We trenched a line all the way from the house. That's this gray wire here. And there's a GFI outlet that was already on the outside of the house that we wired into. And we wired a switch to that outlet and that controls these two shop lights. And we have a couple of outlets over here on this side and we figured we're gonna let them get used to it. And if they want, they can, uh, we can always expand it and add more. But right now there's six outlets in here. So that's fine to, I don't know, get the snow blower started and charge anything that needs to be charged. Now, one of the other awesome features of this shed is this roll up door. It's just like a garage door. And again, nobody hits their head. And it's also just the perfect place to store that tractor. Now this one, we built a bigger ramp and we also put some flashing here because when the door is closed, you can see that the floor would be exposed to the weather. So we put the flashing there just to make sure that when water hits the door, it comes down over the ramp instead of going into the shed. We also put gutters on the shed and brought the water down over here, which is the low spot in the yard. And we also made sure to put, especially with all these trees here, we put gutter guard on those gutters too. Just inexpensive gutter guard that uh, just keeps the leaves out of it. And it found a nice flat spot in the yard. We didn't really have to do much digging or leveling. And uh, we trimmed out these two windows really nicely. And we added a floodlight cam. That's a ring floodlight cam for security. This is a, we are a ring family here. And um, we have a ring alarm in the house and we have a ring doorbell cam as well. So you know, a couple other things to note, the studs are 24 inches on center. Everything is two by four, even the, the, the uh, ceiling joists. We did not use trusses. We just used a ridge pole down the middle. These two windows are about 36 by, I think they are 21 perhaps, something like that. The, honestly, in, with the shortages that we had this year, these were the windows that I could get. And so I got what I could and I designed around it and I ordered them long before I started building the shed. So we made sure that we were making the whole sizes the right size. That'll do it for this episode and for this shed. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. And that has inch and a quarter. It's a little one, that's all I mean.